So I work for uh, Cengage, which is a publisher in a unit called National Geographic Learning. And basically what we do is we publish English language learning textbooks all around the world. I work in Asia and Taiwan, and mainly I train teachers, usually teachers, but I also train salespeople or program directors or things like that as well. So this is a little bit about my position. Now, I've got some background as well. I'm from New Zealand originally. This is actually my hometown, and the red circle is where my parents live, where I grew up. So you can see a nice small town, but I put my history on here a little bit of how I got to where I am because I'm not currently in an L&D position, but I kind of do L&D function. I'll let you read this, really. I'm not going to go through it, but you can see I've had a bunch of different experiences. Some are in L&D but I'm a scientist by background and kind of a small town, blue collar family kind of child. So I have, the, the part of the reason of this is some of the ways I think about things and the way I do things and the way that I put some of this stuff together that I'm going to talk about today is kind of built on some of this background, right? Uh, if anyone wants to know anything more about any of these things, you can always ask me later on, right? But yeah, so that's that's a little bit about me anyway, moving on. So what I wanted to do today is kind of go over a project that we did, how I kind of got into the LCD model a little bit, and then what we did with it. And this project is still ongoing. And I'm going to try and reference steps in the model as we go along. So I'm hoping to make it a good, perhaps, example that people can look at, right? We do annual sales meetings here, and I'm part of a marketing team. So our job is to train the salespeople, right, in, in skills and in product and whatever the, the business is asking for. And this one that we just did was our third virtual sales meeting entirely uh, as a kind of a Zoom offline experience. Um, in, in the past, they're always face-to-face, -face, but this time it was uh, virtual. We've done two of these before, so this one was the third one. And each time things have been going pretty well, trying different things, but we're always trying to set the bar higher and do something, you know, do something a bit more, take the feedback and, and go with it, right? So this time around, we tried, again, some new things to see how they went. And how I got into LCD was I read the book December, January, like eight months ago, while we were prepping the second of these three meetings. And so I was busy trying to insert ideas into the training that we were doing then as we were building it. And we did. And people kind of liked it. So this time we felt emboldened to go even further with it. So that was why it led to the example for today. So we in, in that particular one, we added a lot more chunking, a lot more short chunks, more self-paced learning that traditionally wasn't done in our company for this kind of thing. And just generally, it was pretty well received. So what do we have to do for this particular project? So our company has a very strategic drive on learning and development, although the company is a little bit under-resourced in terms of learning and development, right? So the learning and development team is not very big. And it can't cater to all the different needs because we're a company that exists essentially as like a house of brands, right? I work within a brand called National Geographic Learning, but there are a lot of other brands like Gale, Milady, US Higher Education. There's a whole bunch of other brands within that business. And each of the brands has different needs. And we're all in education, which is a very changing environment at the moment. So we have to deal with that as well. And our company is also looking a lot at ed tech and other sorts of opportunities. So the main point of all this is that we can't afford to sit still. Nobody in our company can afford to not learn. And that's why the company is putting this big push on L&D. So the project essentially was to try to encourage people to do more on their learning and development within their role and for future roles compared to the current status. That was basically the objective we're pushing towards. In terms of what we're trying to change, in with the specific sales reps that were at this meeting, the human resources team had gathered what they called sales performance dimensions, which is the behaviors they want people to see. And by and large, a lot of people do a lot of these things already, right? And so they gathered best practices and a lot of other things, and they produced this document. Now, this I'm, I'm not showing you all the details on purpose, but you can see it's big. This is one piece of the document, and that piece is that box right there. So you can see that what this document contains is a lot of words. And someone showed me this back in March because they know I've got an L&D background, and they said, if we needed to train this within the organization, how should we do it, right? And I was like, okay, so... That was how I got introduced to this. 
And HR had a process that they wanted to go through, but it was very top down. It was very manager identifies the gaps. Once we have a set of gaps that are kind of uniform across a bunch of teams, we'll produce a training for that. And it's a lot more that kind of traditional L&D kind of model, right? And so it was like, okay, well, I think we can do this a bit differently. So when we looked at the people as well, um, which kind of goes back to personas, like uh, Crystal was mentioning before, we were training people in 11 countries with 12 different team managers, 11 different languages as well, although everybody uses English for their common business language. We've got everybody from relatively brand new right through to 20 plus years. And there's a lot of different segments of where people work. So again, no one here is really the same, right? Everybody's a bit different. But the biggest thing which kind of bound people in terms of like calling them maybe personas or putting them in some sort of buckets was the, the I need to learn continuum. Some people felt like I need to learn stuff and other people are like, I don't need to know anything new. I know what I'm doing, right? And so everybody's on that curriculum, uh, sorry, continuum somewhere. And so we were approaching this a little bit like, okay, we've got to find stuff that appeals to the, the new people the people with some experience and the people who think they don't need to learn. We've got to find some way to engage them as well. So this was how we were thinking about the different types of people we're training and in, in terms of our, our learners, okay? In terms of the content, so these sales dimensions, that big document, it was very descriptive, but it probably wasn't very useful to talk about with people. How do you tell people about that? So what we did instead is we decided to try something in terms of what we called ethos behavior statements. Now, I need to give you some background for this. You might have noticed that I used to work at Disney, right? Now, is anyone here familiar with Disney? Raise your hand if you are. Like in terms of what Disney does for training staff. A couple of people, cool. So I, I used to be a trainer for Disney and Disney has a set of values that they call the five keys. Now, I've got a link in here, which I can drop in the chat box later. It, this one says four keys. They actually added the fifth key of inclusion last year. So the, the point is here that they have a framework for keeping their development of people very, very simple. It's like we have these basic statements, and each statement has a behavior. Uh, it has multiple behaviors, actually. So under the courtesy statement, it could be, I project the positive image and energy. And if you're doing that, you're doing what you need to do at Disney, right? So because I used to train on this, I was like, I'm pretty sure we can steal this. We can, we can borrow this idea and turn it into what we need people to learn. So we took this sort of stuff and attached it to this kind of idea. So on the left, put learning first as an example of one of our five ethos statements within Cengage. And then from that big document with like 25 rows of stuff and lots of lots of words, I put together 12 statements, which were I-verb statements. So this is an example of one. I explore my customers' needs and objections, seeking opportunities and solutions. If one of our sales reps is doing that and they're doing it consistently, they're doing a good job, right? And so this is the kind of framework we tried to put in front of people, right? So we're taking what is a, a cold and stoogy document and trying to turn it into something more active and something more that people can attach their own work to. So then when we're thinking about how do we present this, there was a bunch of different steps we figured we had to go through. So one is we have to let people know what these things are because this is brand new, right? People don't know what, what these things are at, all, are at all. We've just made them up, right? We need to give people plenty of models and examples. We need to give people a chance to assess themselves and also discuss with their manager. We need to let people design their own learning to learn what they need to fill their own gaps. It's very employee-led, right? And then we need to support all that with different processes and examples and expectations and so on. So within each of these kind of five pieces, we were thinking about what different assets we could use. So for example, if we're introducing the ideas, we can put together a formal learning, like a class. We can also make like an e-learning, a walkthrough. We can have examples of these things in documents that people can look at and so on. When we're looking at models and behaviors, we can do stories, but we can also do interviews and we can do case studies and what are the different assets that we can put in front of people to let them experience each of these steps. Lots of different things we did there. I'm just going to breeze over a lot of the, the details within that, but that was kind of the things we were looking at in bigger buckets. And then 
up to that stage, basically, this is myself, my own manager, and his manager sitting down and talking about this, trying to figure it out. But none of us work in learning and development, right? <laughs> and so at this stage, we had to go to HR and we basically had to say to them, right, this is what we're thinking of doing. Tell us if we should stop, right? Should we stop? And I was being a little bit cunning by giving them a question where they would say, no, 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 we, we don't, you know, I want a no answer here because I want them to say, no, 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 keep going. We're kind of, we want to see what you're up to, right? A little bit counterintuitive, maybe. I want no's, not yeses. But when I was thinking about how to present this to them, I used these next four or five slides I'm going to show you. This is exactly the pictures I showed to them and tried to teach them the LCD model as we were talking about this idea. And so here you can see exactly like Crystal showed earlier, these are the circles. And I explained the touch points, formal, immediate, and social, and the overlaps. And the moments of learning need, I kind of simplified down into three. So it was first time learning, going a bit deeper. And then the last three, I just kind of lumped into one bucket and said, you're using it now, right? And so then I walked them through this picture of, okay, this is what we can do. So in the first stage, like mainly the green boxes, it's like, okay, we have a class. We can let people understand this idea. We also had a new learning management system and new learning tools, Workday and Udemy. We needed to introduce that to people as well. We needed to give people some experience of working with their manager looking up ideas that they could use for their own learning and giving them some example plans so that they can start making their own. So the whole output of this stage really was a employee sourced, manager supported self-development plan, learning plan. That's basically what we were trying to get out of the stage. Okay. And so these are some of the things we were doing to do that. Uh, and the next step, basically it was like, okay, now to let people go deeper into that. Okay, we've got um, interview videos with some of the best reps. Let's talk to them about what they do. Let's look at their different behaviors and identify their behaviors and then say, okay, that's what they're doing. Are you doing this kind of thing as well? We wanted people to use the, the systems that work has for learning, but we also wanted them to use things like Google and books and you know, going onto YouTube and just going anywhere that they would normally go to look for learning, as well as finding some mentors or people they could share with. And then we supported it a little bit as well. Elevate is our, the system we use in-house for self, like recognition of people doing good work. Everybody can post on Elevate and, and say, hey, this is really good. I, you're learning this. You've, you've improved on that. So we have that kind of piece there as well for some more social aspect of people interacting with each other. And then as we're moving on to the, the later stage and actually wanting to see people change what they're doing, then it's it's things like, okay, how do we start measuring some of this? How do we keep supporting it, right? So uh, we use Slack as a internal communication tool. So can we do story sharing there? Keep going with the manager one-to-ones, uh, keep following up on aspects of the learning, putting together some digital posters and other digital tools for people. And then also trying to enroll IT and HR in some sort of way to measure people's activity, right? And I'll, I'll go through that later. So this is kind of what we put in front of people and said, again, should we stop? Or are you okay if we keep going? And they were like, no, okay, you were, we're okay. You can try. You can see how this goes, right? And so this was the buy-in enough to, to let us get started. So then what happened from there? So we delivered on what we said we were going to do. We ran the meeting. We had the, the live learnings. We had the, the uh, e-learnings, the other ways that people could learn and the tools to support them, right? And then it, it was always like, of course, about tracking what's going on. So for some items we could do in a learning management system because we had everything in a learning management system, but also, we knew that we didn't need it. When we did the second of these three meetings, which was like six months ago, we didn't have an LMS to use at that time. We were in transition. and But what we did instead is we just put together a website. This is actually from our second uh, meeting. And all of our learning resources were just hosted there. And we had a super basic way to track it using surveys that were essentially quizzes. And it was very legwork intensive for the people behind the scenes, but it, it let us track a little bit about what was going on. But for some of the other tracking, we had to do individual follow-ups. So I do a lot of one-to-one -one calls with people and say, okay, so what are you doing? How, how are you working on this? How's this going? And from what they tell me, I can gauge, are you actually doing, are you actually changing what you do in, in your work, right? Are you, are you actually putting some of these things into practice? So this is the way we're trying to track people's results, right? And also getting manager evaluation on what they think 
is happening to their employees too. So it's it's ongoing, right? So in terms of level one, what what actually happens, right? Like the basic straight out of training, what do people think? People felt pretty good about it. The biggest feedback we got on this one was that for people who'd been there quite a while, it was like, oh, now I see, I hadn't thought about this before. Now I see where some ways I can improve, right? So it did manage to engage people and give them something to work towards, right? In terms of level two, there was two things we were looking at. One is, can they kind of recall these new things that we were teaching them? And it's mixed. We, did, we didn't expect perfection, of course. It takes time for these things to pick up cultural kind of wording. But in terms of the concept, everybody pretty much got it. They, they were like, yep, I know, I know what I have to do now. Even if I can't quote scripture and verse on this, I know what I, I know what I should be doing. So we're pretty happy about that. In terms of them actually doing, like making these plans, sourcing their own resources, going out and actually taking action. Yeah, a lot of people are actually doing it. I've been doing these one-on-one calls, like I mentioned, to track down people and see what's actually going on. And people are taking some action. So it's good. Again, not perfect, but there's there's definite progress there. And in terms of results, it'll take a little bit of time, a little bit to be determined in terms of how this works out, but it, it is an ongoing process, right? So we'll just have to keep at it. But in terms of walking through the whole LCD model, I think it's been a quite a good process in terms of the way we've applied it. I know it's not the model model. Um, Crystal's probably looking at it going, hmm, yeah, there's a few things here that are missing, but but it's I think with all of these things, it's always work in progress, right? It's always taking it one more step and then seeing it's like learning anything, right? What can we do next time to move it forward? Some other things I've still got to do. I share, I work in the Asia region. I also shared this with our um, Europe, Middle East and Africa region. And they're gauging it. A lot of them are more British. And so their thinking is a little different. They're a little bit more reticent, but I'm, I'm nudging them forward and they get the idea, which is good. I'm just trying to see if they're actually going to act on anything. Now that we've actually done this kind of experiment, now we've got to go back to HR and say, so what do you guys think? This is, this is what we've got out of it. How do you feel? Do you want to follow up on this more officially and, and make it more core in what we're doing? So that's a discussion still to come. But it has been good to keep building relationships within the company at different levels. You know, sometimes we get very siloed, like one and done on training, but also a little bit one on done and function in the business. And so this is a good way. It has been a good way to communicate across teams as well and build more relationship, which is good. And then my personal learnings, a few things just to wrap up with. What I like about LCD is I like that it's a really good, clear model. And you might have noticed that I'm, as I said, I'm a physicist by training. I really appreciate things that take something complicated and make it simple for people. And this is a quote. I love this quote. A couple of people have heard me say this one before. The simplicity on the far side of complexity is is what I'm looking for, right? It's like, yes, I know things are complicated, but what I need is the simple version that doesn't dumb it down that actually captures the whole thing, right? And so for me, LCD is a bit like Newton's laws of motion. It it summarizes everything you need to know in a nice tight little package, and then you can apply it, right? My team, the the marketing team I work with, I don't, I'm not a manager. I have a manager and I have coworkers. So I influence and suggest and guide, but everybody in my team that I work with gets the idea and we're actually using these ideas in our own team as well. So that's really good. One thing about the pictures I showed you, that was actually what I showed when we talked about it with HR. What we put into practice worked out a little differently because some things didn't quite fly. Some things, okay, we can see people aren't really taking this on. We need to put something else in that gap, right? And again, I'm a, I'm a quotes person, Eisenhower saying, plans are worthless, but planning is everything. It's not the document, it's the intent, right? And if, if we can keep moving forward with the intent, of we need to offer another way for people to learn. Are they learning this way? No. So let's use something else that they can learn to diversify. Just trying to keep that thought in mind is the main thing, I think. And as well as the work I do, I also still teach students. After work, I have AP physics students and high school math students and things like this that I teach. And I actually try and use LCD model with them in some ways as well. And it is good because it gives them other ways to learn, like when they're not sitting down with me. So I appreciate it for that as well. 